for those of us on the other side of the table, we get barraged with information. And I'm wondering how, how do you both, do you just read annuals, 10Ks, and talk to people and ignore everything else? And how do you keep track of everything intellectually? Yeah. Well, we don't keep track of everything, but, but the, the beauty of, to some extent, of evaluating businesses, large businesses, is that it, it is all cumulative. I mean, if you, if you started doing it 40 or so years ago, you really have got a working knowledge of an awful lot of businesses, but there aren't that many to start with that are, you know, and, and you, you, you can get a fix. You know, I'm, what are there, 75 maybe or so important industries, and you get to understand how they operate, and you don't have to start over again every day, uh, and you don't have to consult a computer for it or anything like that. It, so it has the advantage of, of uh, accumulation of useful information over time and you know you, you just had the incremental bit at some point you know why did we decide to buy Coca-Cola in 1988 well it may have been you know just a couple small incremental bits of information but that came into a mass that had been accumulated over over decades and uh, it's a very it, it's a great business that way it's why we like businesses that don't change too much because the past is useful to us Sorry. I can't add a thing to that uh, Mr. Munger, I am intrigued by your marshalling of the Commodore and Aristotle to support your points. Uh, very few of today's money managers would or could do that. Uh, could you elaborate on what role a study of history of civilization plays in developing a sound investment philosophy? Thanks. Well, I, I don't want to praise Aristotle too much. You know, he was the one who thought that women had a different number of teeth from men and <laughs> never looked in his wife's mouth. <laughs> Maybe his wife did. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm all in favor of a good general education, and I think it helps investment performance and it helps business performance, and it helps one be a better citizen. Uh, and some of the things people say are quite memorable, and therefore they're helpful to the mind by the very ease with which they're remembered. And uh, I think you'd be surprised how many bright investment professionals could talk a lot about Aristotle or, or even people I can't stand, <laughs> like Hegel. You want to quote a little more from anybody no, here? No, no, no. <laughs> oh, my, one of my favorite quotations in the whole world is from Einstein. He says, everything should be made as simple as possible, but no more simple. And uh, I think that describes the reality that we all face. Charlie's favorite, though, is Ben Franklin. At, uh, that's probably true, isn't it, Charlie? Yeah. We get more from Ben than, than anybody else. Keep thy shop and it will keep thee, that sort of thing. I mean, we're, yes. just, we're loaded with that stuff. <laughs> Three removes are as good as a fire. <laughs> it's hard for an empty sack to stand upright. <laughs> That's the Bible around Berkshire. Yeah. I once heard Warren say, the reason I'm so financially conservative is I, I don't want to find out how badly I might behave if I were stretched. <laughs> I think we better cut him off here. <laughs> Zone two, you better uh, yeah. cut the thumping there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My name is uh, Stanley Watkins and uh, from Manhattan, Kansas, and I'm a shareholder. And uh, I have two questions. And the first one, I, I know the answer, so you can just say yes or no. Uh, would you consider investing in indexes such as OEX, pure speculation? Um, are you going to say yes? And number two, uh, would you encourage investors to, uh, if they were trying to get uh, a lot of their investment, to use leaps on investments such as Coca-Cola instead of buying the stock? Use what on? Uh, I missed that. Leaps. Leak? Leaps, L -A -A -P -S. Leaps. Oh, yeah. oh, I see. We're still on options. Oh, yeah. 
Well, yeah, both the questions relate to to futures of one sort, uh, calls or whatever they may be, and, and uh, uh, I think that uh, uh, investors should stick to buying ownership in businesses. I, uh, it's not that you can't come up with a theoretical argument for buying, say, a, I mean, if you think Coca-Cola is attractive, you can say, well, I'd rather buy a five-year option on, on Coke than buy the stock directly because it in introduces leverage without the risk of going broke. But uh, I think that that's a dangerous path to start down because it, uh, it if it works well, it, it's so it, it, it's, it's dynamite to start playing with things that can expire and become worthless or or can be bought with very low margin, as the as the uh, OEX options you were talking about. Uh, borrowed money usually or frequently leads to trouble, and it's not necessary. I mean, it it, it uh, you know if if you had some compelling reason, if you're gonna if you had to double your money by the end of the year and be shot, you know, then I would head for the futures market because you you know you, you need to do it. I mean, you have to you have to introduce borrowed money, but but. Uh, you really ought to figure out how you can be happy with the present amount of money you've got and then figure that everything else is, you know, all to the good as you go along. And, and uh, uh, I, I, don't, I don't think people, once they start focusing on short-term price behavior, which is the nature of buying, buying uh, calls or, or leaps or, or uh, speculating in index futures, once you start concentrating on that, I think you t you're very likely to take your eye off the main ball, which is just valuing businesses. So I, I don't recommend it. Charlie? Well, this is a group of affluent investors, and I don't think many of them did it in leaps. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's certainly true. If we'd, if we'd operated Berkshire with considerable borrowed money over the years, you know, it, it would have done very much better than it has, but but nobody knew what that amount of borrowed money would have, the appropriate level would have been, and it wouldn't have made any difference to us. I mean, we have just as much fun uh, doing what we've done than if we if we'd owned it on leverage and and had been twice as much. I mean, it, it just it's just not it's not the way we approach it. To, if you have X and you think you're going to be way happier when you've got two X, it, it, it's probably not true. It, it, uh, it's uh, you really ought to enjoy where you are at the point, and if you can make, you know, if you can make 12 or 15 percent a year, and you desire to save, and you like piling it up, you know, it'll all come in time. And and why, uh, you know, why risk losing what you need, you know, and half for what you don't need and don't have? It's never made a lot of sense to us.